Hey guys and welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is Patrick Metzger and I do a lot of videos on a lot of different things off-road, um, filming things like that. So today we're going to be talking about my trailer build, so stay tuned. <laughs> Now I had some video footage of my trailer that I could not find, so my apologies, but today I'll be showing you all pictures and images of the build. I'll be walking you through um, the logic and um, some of the design features and then how I had it made. Um, I, did, I didn't do all the welding, but I did all the woodwork, so let's get right into it. All right guys, when I first started researching building a trailer, my original intent was to get an old military trailer. Um, that way I could just add a roof rack to it, repaint it, and call it done. Um, and I actually did come across a little, I think it was an M100 trailer that I picked up from over in Alabama. Um, I got it home and I did some more research and I actually found out that all trailers that are built by the Army before 1980-ish um, were painted with paint that contained lead or potentially did so I bought a lead testing kit off of Amazon I just tested it and sure enough it came back positive for lead now since I have small children didn't want to consider that um, for my build so I kind of kept looking I found a trailer when I was looking on Facebook when I reached out to this guy I found out he was a trailer fabricator um, his company is Southern Steel um, which is down near Macon and um, I kind of reached out to him via text and I said hey you know do you ever do custom builds and he said yeah I sent him a few forum posts a few images that I found online I even drafted up um, a drawing of kind of what I wanted and he he was excited to work on this project with me so so what we ended up doing since he refurbishes trailers I ended up trading him the trailer that I had plus some additional cash on top and having him weld up the frame and the sides for me um, as the base for my trailer. Now for the base of the trailer, I used two inch by three inch steel. And the sides were made out of one and a half inch by one and a half inch steel tubing. The rectangular part of the trailer was made four foot by six foot so it could accommodate my Mount Rainier tent um, on top and it would pretty much cover 100% of the trailer up when it was closed. The frame rested on a 2,000 pound axle and some basic 1,100 pound leaf springs that I wanted to totally upgrade down the road. Didn't end up doing it, but I, I used that and honestly, the trailer never exceeded probably 1,000 pounds um, in my travels. I would put the majority of the actual weight in my vehicle, like for water, gasoline, items like cooler and food and ice and stuff like that, I would end up putting in my truck. Um, so the things that went in the trailer were just my, my stove, um, blankets and pillows and totes and things like that. So I kept the weight load uh, relatively light. Cody ended up adding a drop down tailgate and a two inch receiver on the back just for additional carrying capacity. I went ahead and added the two inch receiver onto the back of the trailer so that I could put a bike rack on there because the other reason why I was having this trailer made was um, to drive it down on vacation with my family down to Florida. After he finished the welding, he did a one quick coat of paint on it. Um, and I came down there and did the trade, gave him my trailer, gave him some cash and took ownership of my trailer. Um, and this is kind of what it looked like when I got home. Now these are other sets, this is another set of wheels that I put in front of it, but you kind of get the idea of how it's gonna look once it gets lifted and I was pretty excited to do that. The next phase of the build was adding the interior and the sides. So I went over to the Home Depot to build out that the flooring and the sides. Uh, for the floor I used half inch sanded pine, but I wrapped it in fiberglass reinforced panel. So, so those of you who know, uh, who don't know, fiberglass reinforced panel is actually used for shower walls. Um, so it's waterproof and it protects the wood and any sheetrock that, that would be behind it. Uh, so for this case, really what I was looking to do was to just coat the top and the bottom of the trailer with fiberglass and then just seal the edges up um, with a good coat of paint to make it last. I glued, trimmed, and notched the floor and then I dropped it in. Now I didn't bolt it down because I didn't want to risk any additional holes that might rust down the road. 
For the sides, I ended up getting cedar tone pre-finished pine fence pickets. Um, now these fence pickets ended up looking great because they're long. I just cut them to length. I beveled the edges with my table saw and then I was able to line it up so it wasn't waterproof, but when water hits the side of it, it wouldn't go into the trailer. It would just kind of drip down on the side. And because these are fence pickets, they're already stained and ready to be outdoors. For the tailgate, I mitered a sheet of pressure treated plywood for a nice cooking surface. And to save money, I opted not to have the one and a half inch tubing capped off. So I ended up filling that up with great stuff. And then when I painted it, when I did a fresh coat of black paint, I just painted right over the great stuff, which is totally paintable. Now it will swell with age, but you can just drill it out and cap it off with something if you wanted to down the road. After installing the flooring and the sides, I budgeted for a larger set of tires. So I went online, I bought some wheel adapters that converted it from 5x4.5 to 6x5.5 to match my Toyota lug pattern. Turns out I actually needed that additional space to have the wider road tire put onto it instead of having a trailer tire on it. Now I went on to find some Toyota wheels and tires from an old 1990s Toyota and I painted the wheels black and I ended up really digging them and uh, they actually had all-terrain tires on them so I didn't need to worry about getting new tires for it. Um, so I've got the right lug pattern. I don't have the wheel si the tire size that matches my truck, but that's okay. Um, I would rather have it match in the event that I needed to use my truck's full size spare on the trailer. It would work for that. So that was I was okay with that. Now after getting these tires mounted and some temporary tail lights mounted, I got a tag for it and we ended up using it when we headed up to Gatlinburg. Um, so fall of 2016 we headed up to Gatlinburg right after the fires we had already been planning a trip up there the fires that they had took place about two months before we were scheduled to go up there so we ended up collecting donations and taking them up there so I got to use the trailer on that ride the trailer was very smooth when it had the load on it um, and, it, and it was I was very happy with the way it was coming along now the ultimate goal of this trailer um, is to make it you know ready to go camp trailer at the drop of a hat. So I went on to put electro galvanized super strut from Home Depot. I have another video on super strut that I've used for my roof rack. I simply pulled the roof rack off of my truck and I installed it on the trailer. I bolted it on the sides, still trying to avoid making holes at, if at all possible, bolted it on the side. Um, and it ended up being a perfect surface for mounting the tent. Now, after doing a long trip, I did realize that the because I was only bolting it on, it was still kind of shimmying around. So I did end up driving four bolts into each of the four corners at the base of the roof rack just to make sure it was nice and secure. And after that, I didn't have any more movement. Uh, now, the super strut gives you a perfect surface for mounting things like the high lift. So I mounted the high lift on one side and I mounted the roto packs on the other side of the truck. I uh, didn't end up mounting the roto packs to the super strut. I just mounted it into the wooden sides. However, um, I was able to mount the high lift jack on that one side and it was actually a perfect solution. And this is kind of what it looked like at the end. Um, this, last, this past year, 2018, I ended up selling it in the spring um, to upgrade a bumper on my truck. Uh, but it was a great build. I'm totally gonna build another one down the road. Um, would love to build an enclosed actual expedition style trailer that actually has a cabin and everything in it But um, that's another thing down the road that I'm planning on doing so anyway, thank you guys for um, Following along if you guys have any questions on the build, please post them below. I'm happy to help um, And then uh, hopefully I can inspire some of you guys to go out and build a trailer. So uh, Thanks so much be sure to like and follow this video and we'll see you in the next one.